un saludo especial para todos. Hola, bienvenidos a Adelante Tigres. Bienvenidos a todos. It's my pleasure to welcome you back to Princeton for Adelante Tigres. Bienvenidos a Adelante Tigres. Adelante Tigres. These alumni conferences have been important ways for Princeton to reflect on its past, to reflect on what we've done right, and to reflect on what we've done wrong, and to understand what it is that we need to do going into a complicated future to be an even better and more welcoming and inclusive place than we've been in the past. Those topics, of course, are especially important today. There's a lot of discussion in the world, important discussion taking place about issues around immigration, inclusivity, and equality. And one of the things that gets me excited about this conference is our opportunity to talk about those issues in terms that are personal and terms that are scholarly. And I look forward to joining you in those conversations. Coming to Princeton and being such a minority, as a minority as a woman, a minority as a person of color, a minority as a low-income person, was jarring and at the same time inspiring because I took the opportunity to learn a lot more about my own culture. We knew what our identity was. We were looking for access for ourselves, our culture, and values. The group split into the, you know, Acción Puerto Riqueña, and I believe it was the Chicano Caucus, and the Cuban organization. And somewhere along the line, I was elected to be the first president of Acción Puerto Riqueña. So, in terms of the goal, to institutionalize the Latino experience at Princeton, include us not ignore us and not exclude us. And that's a function of analyzing who we are and where we are. And it was easy to get other like-minded students from Mexico, from LA, from New Mexico, to arrive at the same conclusion. We would pave the way and help others from similar backgrounds become aware of the opportunity, be encouraged to attend, and also be supported while they were here. I initially didn't have Princeton actually in my list because I thought it was somewhat unattainable. It all had to do with the guy who went to my high school a few years back who had come from Princeton as part of uh, one of these college fairs. What brought me to Princeton were actually teachers. So when I was in the seventh grade, I had a history teacher whose name was Mr. Ledwikowski, and he was a Marine. And he said to me, you know, you're a smart kid. You should think about going to a place like Princeton. I went and visited the campus, and I was thrilled by the community that I saw there. It was supportive, but was also engaged with the rest of the campus. And I just became enamored by what was available. And I received the brochure and the trifold uh, pamphlet and fell in love with Princeton and what I read about it. So it was the only school I applied to other than the University of Texas at Austin where I had a full scholarship for the honors program. I applied early, I got in, and then all of my friends and relatives and parents and brothers and sisters said, well, that's great, but how are you gonna pay for it? In my view, there was no other choice to go anywhere other than Princeton. Obviously, things worked out. Uh, the incredibly generous uh, alums of Princeton University made it possible for me to get through the university. And it's true for my wife as well. My wife comes from a working class family, and the university and the alumni made it possible for her and for me to, uh, to get through this incredible place. The, the Latino student organizations tended to serve as a real cohesive space, but it was not, like I said, an exclusive community. Most of us roomed with people who were not uh, Hispanic. I was involved in other organizations as well. For example, I was a member of the Princeton equestrian team. Um, I was part of the Russian club in my first few years. Uh, so we all did other things as well. So, you know, it's a very tumultuous time in your life as you're trying to make out who you are and what you're gonna do with the rest of it. For any student at Princeton, you know, going to college, um, it's something you have to acclimate yourself to. And every student at Princeton, regardless of nationality or ethnic origin, has to make that adjustment. Students today, I'm sure, struggle too. Uh, but it's just part of being young and being 18, 19, 20, and feeling 
kind of alienated here, and I did. I do feel like we were. In the fall of 1995, there was a call for students who were interested in ethnic studies, what we had identified at the time as Latino and Asian American studies, to attend a meeting at the Third World Center. And it was a pretty active, lively discussion on what we needed to do as a community to ensure that we made progress with these two programs, these two initiatives. So as a result of that meeting, a suggestion was made that we think about the idea of a sit-in. We proceeded to set a, a date for, for the sit-in and 17 of us gathered and walked into Nassau Hall and that's where we, we spent the, the day and a half uh, voicing our concerns. At the end of the sit-in, the students who were working as the negotiators met with the administration and felt that their, their needs, their specific concerns were addressed. The university made a commitment to allocate funds for um, professorships in the areas of Latino and Asian American studies and also allocated funds to develop curriculum in, in those, those two areas. We had strong leaders at the time of, of the student uh, organizations. They wanted to have a Latino studies program where they could at least earn a certificate. The importance of the intellectual domain, asking the questions, not let's compare Latinos to whites, blacks, and others, which is an important exercise, but what can we learn about labor markets by studying Latinos? What can we learn about language acquisition by studying bilingualism? What can we learn about education systems and how they are not uh, operating effectively by studying Latinos? That's a different way of, of phrasing and posing the questions, which is what I try to do rather than saying, oh, it's our turn, let's add another column to the comparison. Adelante means, you know, forward, onward. I think it's an important opportunity to see where the university is because the university is, is an institution that continues to grow, develop, and change. And whatever the, stu the, the alumni got out of it, they, could, they still have an opportunity to give back and call and forge the next generation. The students who come here are second to none when we think about the big distribution and of possibilities and opportunities. And to participate in shaping that, I think, is a, is a, a phenomenal opportunity. As a graduate student, being a Latino, the experience is fundamentally different than as an undergraduate. And there's a few reasons why that's the case. Um, the biggest one is we're older. We have more life experiences. Our priorities are completely different. It was great to join other international students coming from everywhere in the world with their own stories, with their own lives, with their own vision with their own experience. Getting to know everybody in my class and maintaining those friendships um, has been just one of the best blessings in life. Um, sorry, I get a little choked up when I talk about Princeton. <laughs>so Bolet Folklorico at Princeton. It's Mexican folk dance music, it's beautiful. Each state in Mexico has their own tradition of the music and the costumes. We went about starting the first urban Latin dance company on campus called Mas Float Dance Company. And within four years, it became one of the biggest dance companies on this campus. We, we, we danced the traditional salsa, merengue, bachata, kizomba, samba, and we always, always encourage our members to like take on a choreography. I brought with me today two pictures from graduation. My mom, my grandma in the middle, and my tia. Then my uncle Raimundo and myself. And unfortunately, um, my uncle Raimundo passed away um, about three years ago. And everything I'm doing is to honor his memory and also to, you know, honor the three amazing women who raised me to who I am today. Uh, my parents migrated from El Salvador in the 80s during the Civil War, and it wasn't easy for them. And this is something that, you know, when I wake up on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, it's something I think about, you know, it's like, I have a ton of opportunities that they didn't. And so now, like, I'm focused on making the most of them. I don't think I'll ever face as much adversity as they faced, you know. And, I mean, when, when I think about who I want to become in life, it's like, I want to become them, you know. I want to be able to overcome no everything, no matter what life throws at me. 
You know, a lot of people had told my mom that she wasn't raising me right, that I was reading too many books and I had too many grandiose ideas. I, I lived too much to debate and to argue as opposed to actually going out and doing work with my hands. I feel as though I, I have that responsibility now to like go back and show the people that in my community that it's possible to do big things, to dream big. I am happy to be here. I'm honored uh, to, to be in this ceremony. What stood out to me were the diverse, vibrant, interconnected communities from which Princeton was formed and which have shaped my time here. I first became involved in ALPA, which is the Association of Latino Princeton Alumni. It's been about seven, eight years. We started to put a working board together and having elections uh, and reconnecting with alums, fellow alums, and the current students here. And actually that helped me understand that uh, I am a Princetonian. I do think it's important for alumni and for students to know that there are uh, Latino alumni on the board of trustees. When the alumni elected me university trustee, I think I was in a state of shock that I was actually coming back to Princeton as a trustee. I was amazed that a Mexican-American kid from San Antonio, Texas could ever come back to a place like Princeton and be trustee. I was incredibly humbled um, to be offered that position of trust. I'm very grateful to Sonia Sotomayor, who was here when I was here and who um, told me when my daughter was going to come here that I shouldn't let anybody else bring her. She wanted to bring her here. And a year or two ago, she told a story at Alumni Day. One of my most joyous moments of my life was helping Margarita bring her daughter, Marisol, to Princeton. It was that moment of separation from your child. And so to have a friend, a dear friend, who had been here with me, who was very proud and happy that my daughter was coming, who had actually brought her things to the campus, and then sat with me as I sort of sniffled uh, when I walked away and realized that my little girl was now a college student, uh, was really very, very sweet. I was very moved to see Sonia Sotomayor's quote engraved in the middle of campus greens in front of Nassau Hall. That to me is emblematic of what this conference means and what it's going to allow Latino alumni to do. Princeton in the nation's service, in the service of all nations, and in the service of humanity, one person and one act at a time. I've tremendously enjoyed the alumni conferences that we've had in the past, and I've been looking forward to this one all year long. I've already enjoyed the opportunity to talk to some of you about your experiences on the campus while you were here and what they meant to you. I really enjoyed talking to Charlie Hay when I was down in Puerto Rico last year, and he at the time gave me a copy of Bacalao, the newsletter that he and Sonia Sotomayor and others put out while they were on the campus. His stories about that time were tremendous, and it'll be wonderful over the course of the next few days to hear you talk about your time at Princeton and to hear about the tapestry of the Latino community as all of you move through Princeton and into your alumni careers. I look forward to talking to you. Welcome back to Princeton. Adelante Tigres. Thank you.